Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. Auto Detailing Podcast listeners, have you been thinking about starting your very own mobile auto detailing business, about stepping out and living your dream as a full-time auto detailer, but paralyzed by the fear of failure, paralyzed that you're going to make the wrong purchasing decisions, I've developed an online training course for people just like you. The Mobile Auto Detailing Academy is an online training course that you could take at your own pace and we teach you everything you need to know so you can kiss fear goodbye. And not only do you get the training modules, but you also get access to our private Facebook mastermind group of other Academy members where you can ask as many questions as you want and get feedback immediately. Head on over to mobileautodetailingacademy.com and enter in promo code podcast for your special offer. Welcome to episode 100 of the Auto Detailing wow, Podcast. 100? <laughs> Are you One, kidding me? <laughs> 100. And uh, I'm back down at McGuire's headquarters because I thought there would be no better guest for episode 100 um, than the pinnacle uh, figure for the car care industry, and that is Barry McGuire. So, Barry, thank you for taking the time. Yeah, Thanks for coming I'm on the show. Greatly honored. 100, <laughs> 100 of these things you've created. 100. Land. Yeah, so. Uh, Congratulations. Thanks. I really. You're, doing, doing, you're making a lot of noise. A lot of people will find out who you are in a hurry. Uh, it's amazing what's been accomplished since you started, which wasn't that long ago. Yeah, just back wow. in August. Wow. So, uh, I appreciate it. idea. You chased your dream. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And, and I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you got. Um, just a jam-packed schedule. So I'm delighted, honored, <laughs> honored to talk with you. So let's let's dive right in because I know you're on a time constraint, and again, I, I want to be a respecter of your time. But let's, you know, I really want to hear a, uh, I really want to kind of go back way in time to the beginning for you. We know McGuire started in 1901. Obviously, I, I don't <laughs> go back quite that far. <laughs> not quite that far, but take <laughs> us back. What, you know, what's your earliest? Maybe not your earliest memory, but what's, you know. What was it like as a as a child to grow up in McGuire? Well, it's wonderful to be born into a family business. You know, it's just it's very special. I was blessed to have that opportunity, and and uh, so I started working the business when I was like five six years old. Wow! Um, literally, I mean, I was around doing odd jobs and things and whatever. It's strictly strictly relatives in the business back in the day, you know, and. Um, uh, by the time I turned, uh, oh, I was I was still in grade school. You know, fifth fifth by summers of uh, my fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, uh, I began working those summers in the family business. And there's only like a dozen people in the business. Wow! And um, I would literally spell the people as they went on vacation. I would take their job. You know, on on the line. Yeah. And we had uh, little machines and stuff, and you know, it just it's. I look back now, and it was so primitive, but that's what I did. In fact, I, I, the, the strong recollection I have is when September came and school started, I felt it wasn't fair that I had to go back to school because I could do the job that these adults were doing. I could do it as good as they did, and life wasn't fair. And I, I, I literally remember sitting uh, on, the, on the monkey bars in the playground of my, of my grade school mm -hmm. and seeing the employees drive down the street that, that I had replaced during the summertime. And I thought, it's just not right. This is like a prison. I mean, I should be working. So uh, I've had a great life working in the family business. Uh, you know, I went from there. I went on through, through college and had a great college experience, too, by the president. And, Mm -hmm. Learned all kinds of wonderful things at a Christian college. Mm -hmm. Had learned great values. Mm -hmm. And right after I got out of school, man, I was off and, and running. I, I moved with my wife. We moved to Detroit, and I took I mean, right out of college, and we moved to Detroit, and I took over all of our business with the car manufacturers. So I was a 21 year old kid. Wow! I'm calling on General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler, and only in a family business can you get that kind of an opportunity, you know? And that kind of pull. And I, didn't you know, have, to... I didn't have a clue what I was doing, but I knew how to buff cars. I knew I knew, I knew, knew how to do what I did. Mm -hmm. I knew I, I could talk product of uh, my life. Right. And uh, it was fun even as a young guy getting the, 
get, gaining respect, earning respect, and eventually, you know, with, I mean, right away they were holding clinics and having me come in and teach paint correction uh, back in those days. I've At never, the, for the car manufacturers? Car manufacturers. I've never, um, I've been back there about a year, and uh, Buick, each division of General Motors operated independently in those okay. days, and we sold Buick all of their products. And I remember they called in all of their zone service managers from all over the United States uh, to have me teach them. I'm 22 years old, and I'm teaching them how to take scratches out of paint finishes, you know. And, Good for the uh, ego, I guess, right? Well, uh, it's great for the fear factor. Right. I mean, I mean, it makes you trust the Lord. I was taught, trust the Lord with all your heart, and you'll direct Absolutely. your steps. I prayed and prayed and prayed. And it really cinched it for me because God was faithful to me, and I... You know, I had those kinds of experiences, but also as I, I, I took over all the sales for the East Coast, okay. uh, as well as the, the car manufacturers, and I'm a car guy, I grew up a car guy, you know, and so I had to go to car shows, everywhere had, I went, had I, to. I found our products, they were, mm. our products were being used at, at, on the best cars at all these car shows, and I started talking to them, but once they all gave me the same story, their painter had put them onto it, in fact, they'd actually given, in most cases, their painter had given them are Meguiar's number seven, Mirglaze mm -hmm. number seven, mm -hmm. and said to keep this paint looking like this long term, you know, use this product on a regular basis. So um, that's what inspired me to go into retail. I mean, we were not a professional brand, a professional. We, we were not a retail brand. We we're a professional right. brand, adamantly professional. My grandfather and my dad and his two brothers, they didn't want anything to do with that Jippo discount. <laughs> Uh, retail business were a professional brand, mm -hmm. so I held a meeting with them in 1969. How and old I, were you at this point? Uh, well, I was 27. Okay. And I said, uh, you know, whether we like it or not, we are in the retail business. They said, no, we're not. I said, no, no, we really are. <laughs> it's been used all over the all right. over the country by by consumers, but they're not really consumers. It's not, I'm not talking about the mass market. I'm talking about car guys. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about car guys. That they're like pseudo professionals. They're really they will follow directions. They will do it correctly. They're our kind of crowd. Mm -hmm. And they're frustrated with us because they can't get the product. And I can't imagine how much product we could sell to car guys right. if we made it available, available to them through retailers. And um, so I talked him into um, let me give it a go. And uh, then I had to think, oh, my goodness, thanks for what I got myself into. I don't have a clue about the retail market. <laughs> Out of a punk kid, you know, I know how to buff cars. Right. I know how to run a buffer really well. <laughs> Going to a retailer and trying to get product on a shelf, that's a whole different, different animal. Ball but game, but it's, so. it's brilliant because you see a, you see a market opportunity. And, and at the same time, I see where your, your dad and your grandfather are at saying, you know, m maybe their mindset, and correct me if I'm wrong, but their mindset is, you know, we don't want our company tainted or, or the the yeah. view of our company tainted by yeah. Yeah. these amateurs that have no idea what they're doing. Absolutely, positively. And my grandfather would <clears throat> never sell a product unless he proved to himself that on a black finish, it was it performed better than anything else he could find, any competitive product. And my, my dad and two brothers continued that. My dad started making formulations with his dad back when he was like 12, 13 years old. And he continued until he was 83. Wow. Okay, so 70 years. Right. When you work on one skill for 70 years, you get pretty good at You're it pretty after dang a while. Good 10, at it. 20, 30, you know, after a while. Yeah. And it was always that same dictate. It has to, we have to try every product we can against it. And if it worked, if we worked the best on a black finish, we always demonstrate on black finishes to this day, right. as you will know. We'll yeah. only drive black cars. Right. If it'll work on black, it'll work on anything. And, uh, and so that's why. Uh, car guys and custom painters loved it because, of course, of course, in the lights on show cars, you want to have a perfectly clear finish. I, I, I coined this term show car perfect paint finish. Right. My granddad was doing that. He didn't use that term, but my granddad was doing that, and it's happened throughout our whole history. That's been our claim to fame, to create a perfectly clear reflection. When you get out on a sunny day, you look at the sun and a black finish, you don't see any holograms or scratches or whatever you want to call it, right. spider with right. different turns for them, but you just see the clear reflection of the sun. Yeah, that's and, when you do that. And if it works on black, it's going to work it, on it every other color. Every other color. So that's, that's been, been it, and um, it's been quite a ride, you yeah. know, going to retailers and with a product and trying to tell them that we're going to, I'll bring you different customers. It's a different audience. These are mm -hmm. car guys. Well, it's car guys. I mean, they didn't ever heard the term. I hadn't created the term. I just like, they're car guys. I didn't say <laughs> automotive people. I said, they're right. car guys. They're patient car guys. And, 
you know, and um, they'll come in here and they'll be loyal. They want our brand. I'll bring you new customers. And on the mm. at the time, they had J Wax and Simon Eyes and mm. a whole bunch of brands, no loyalty. Right, right. And, uh, you know, I started selling small little independent retailers and three, four store chain okay. little stores. And it took a long time before I finally got into chain stores. Mm -hmm. And, um, and long before we got into the, the mass, the big box stores. Right. Just one product at a time. With what, when I finally got them convinced and got one product in, yeah. it would stay. Okay. And then you know they'd the next year and say, "Well, that worked out pretty good." You know that. <laughs> you, you, and actually, you're right. That's new customers. But it's a win-win-win for everyone it involved. Won for them, and you they know. make more money in our products because we sell for a little more money. Right. And uh, and so then they'd ask for another product, and so I've watched it now. And uh, you know, here we are at Walmart. We have 70 products on the shelves at Walmart. <laughs> Who would ever dream, you know? I mean, back when I started, we were doing $600,000 a year, you know? And then I remember when we had a $600,000 month. But I remember when we had a $600,000 day. Oh. And then we had a $600,000 order, you know? It's like, I market, I always go back to $600,000. I look at it now and and I look at what we sell to the chain stores today, it just takes your breath away. Right. I mean, they're, they're, they buy 10, 15 trailer loads of these little bottles of car wax. And, and uh, to get from where I was to where I am now, where we are now, it's a team effort. It's not me. Absolutely. It's a whole company full of patient people that love what we do. Uh, so we have a wonderful team. And um, it's like you almost can't get from where we were to where we are today. Absolutely. You know? So I want to go back just for a little bit to that, that meeting in 1969, I yeah. think you said, where you sat yeah, down yeah. with your grandfather and your father, yeah. and you're saying, look, <laughs> we need to go retail, and they're saying, no way, Barry. You know, what was it that you said, or, or what was it that you showed them? Was it, you know, the, the guys at the car show want this product and are already really using the product, and, you know, th here's, yeah. an, here's a need that we can fill, you know, and also help to grow the company. Yeah. What what was it that you showed them that? It was this thing of they are these people are professionals. They're okay. not they're not just casual people, and it's true today. I right. mean, a car guy is not a. There's a big difference between a car guy user of car wax, and what, quite frankly, almost ninety percent of all car wax products today are bought by car guys. Right. Okay. So when I started, they didn't even know who car guys were. Now retailers understand that's their entire marketplace. Right. So they have to have Meguiar's because we kind of lead the pack in, the, right. in that category. But even today, a car guy, um, starving for information, starving for the information you're providing. Hmm. Why are you a success? Because car guys, they're, they want to know more. There's right. no in. I call point it a sickness. It's, car guys, well, it's a sickness. Yeah. You just, you... Uh, I love it because yeah. they they just are, there's I don't know if there's another industry where the the people the consumers or whatever you want to call them within the industry are so yeah. passionate and, and so willing don't to love I love it yeah. they're so willing to put their there's, money on the line there's and everything. no end there's no saturation point of training yeah uh, the most I mean we have training garages here where they come mm -hmm. by our offices on Saturdays, Thursday nights or nights yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. and. And, and, and first timers are always saying, I've been I've been a car guy for twenty years. I've been polishing my car since I was a teenager and I've been doing it wrong all these years. I cannot believe how much easier it is right. and how much better results I get <laughs> when I do it the right way, you know. And listen to you know, yeah. read the bottle that was funny. I was just yeah. thinking, you know, uh, we were looking at the bottles before we started recording and, yeah. and you mentioned that your grandfather put on the back of the bottle, do not use yeah. do not purchase, do not purchase. This, this product unless you follow directions. I mean that's what that's the dictate I grew up with. I took that off the label. Right. But I didn't continue that. But I have people now say you need to put that back on the label, you know. It's true, <laughs> you, you need know. to do it right. <laughs> and and I guess the flip side the flip side of the coin with the with the guys in the industry were so in tune with the industry and so you know overzealous and to do stuff that we don't really want to listen to the to the bottle <laughs> and the label you yeah, know you know when everything else fails follow directions <laughs> but car guys aren't that way car guys they want to know right they want to know and so that's our audience it's mm -hmm. worked exceedingly well for us and um we love it we're we're in the passion business okay we we uh we uh we have passion for what we do mm -hmm. 
Um, it shows the, in the, everything. The, the lab, I can't take you in the lab, but if you went in there, you would feel the passion when you walk mm -hmm. in the room. These guys are so passionate. They're creating such great formulas, and they just love what they do, or they're working and testing and mm -hmm. all this stuff. So there's passion in every bottle from the marketing side and yeah. creating the packaging and whatever. And, of course, we don't advertise all that. We're kind of lousy advertisers. We go out to car guys. We go to car shows. We go to thousands of car shows. Right. One car guy at a time because we know if, if we get their attention and help them get their paint finished so it's show car perfect, we'll have them for a lifetime. We have we have the best statistic of all the statistics uh, related to our company. These are industry statistics, not ours. Mm -hmm. So we have an eighty-three percent customer loyalty factor. That's unprecedented in almost any category. It's huge people that get on our products, they will not. They will not use another product. They will stay. Maybe sometimes oh, they hear get their head might get turned for a moment, right, and they say, right. "Oh, you know, I should, why did I?" You know, they're back to us. They right. stay loyal over the years. You know, I was thinking, even coming from a family that's not really uh, car crazy. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, you know, yeah. to to use another one of your right. terms. But I would venture to say that you know, eighty to ninety percent of every household. We'll say in America has at least one bottle of McGuire something. <laughs> well, I'd like to think that I don't. Know. I, I, and I have no no. Most backing. people don't wax the cars anymore. I mean, we're in a generation now with clear coat finishes. Yeah. They are so wonderful. Mm -hmm. They're so resilient. If you're not sensitive to scratches, um, you can really get by and drive your car and have it for several years and not even think about mm -hmm. it. Um, on the other hand, if you're a car guy. It works on our behalf because clear coat finishes scratch more easily, and they magnify the scratches. It could not be better for us. I mean, car guys need our products now more than ever. Right. And we keep coming up with these products that, that make it easier and easier to do the job faster. Yes. Get a darker, clearer finish. I mean, just the, 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 the liquids we're coming up with and the types of pads we're coming yes. up with and stuff. It's, it is, it's such, so much fun. It, we have fun. You come in this place, you just you can feel yeah. the, the energy, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely, and, and it's more fun now than it's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that that companies like yours are ma are taking the effort to make it easier on the detailer or the car enthusiast. Yeah. Well, there's no other company like ours. We talk about companies like ours. <laughs> Wait, there's I, other I, car I, care. Show me one other company that there's <laughs> hey, where there's lots of great people in the car care business. But I, I tell you what, I don't think there's another company when you walk in, you feel you sense it when you walk right. in the door. There's Absolutely. an energy in this place. Absolutely, specifically in this. room. <laughs> in my and we're, we're in Barry's <laughs> office right now, and the energy just is oozing <laughs> but, out you know, of the bottles. My grandfather <laughs> had it, and, and, and my, my dad and his two brothers had it, and um, I am so grateful that mm. we have a company full of people yeah. that share that passion today, and they're all over the world. We have yeah. passionate people. We're in 100 markets around the world, you know? We just had an international meeting at, at the SEMA show. We had 90-some-odd people there from around the world. And they're all Maguire's Thailand or Maguire's Taiwan or Maguire's Indonesia or what have you, you know. And they come in with their own stories. And they're doing the same thing we're doing here, there. They've invested their own money. We find people that when we tell them you're going to have to go to car shows like 40 weekends a year, <laughs> right. if they say, oh, you know, I, I would then forget about it. Right. It's, what, it's the one that says, really? You mean I can go to <laughs> car shows 48 weekends a year and make money doing it? <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> like, just make sure my wife's okay that's with it. Right. Well, there. and the wives are in it, too. <laughs> yeah, you that's know? true. So um, we that's have true. passionate people around the world, and they're replicating, in some cases, better than us, mm. what, what we've done here. But I love the standard that you guys... Uh, you know, set for the industry, and it, it was so prevalent at SEMA. You know, everything from, um, you know, you said you don't do much advertising or marketing, but your marketing almost stands out through how you guys set up your booths, how you guys dress, uh, the logo on everything, or the logo behind you in the background. Yeah, think, and and we, we, we kind of work hard <laughs> at that. We, we're, we're, what we, what we, what we'd say, if we're going to do something, let's do it right. Yeah. You know, yeah. And let's, I mean, we're, it, it, passion is about perfection, mm -hmm. if you will. We don't want to be snobbish about that, but we want to do it right. If we if we do it half baked, people never come up to our level. Yeah, and so we just need to do it really well. See, look at that. So those guys got their act together. Yep. They're serious about what they're doing. They're Absolutely. a lot of fun. They're having fun. Yeah, and we want to get in on a huge it. part of it. And uh, you know, when we train people, we show them first. I mean, you've been in our classes. Mm -hmm. We show first, which is always impressive, and mm -hmm. people walk away and say, "Well, that would really hurt." Then we demonstrate, as you know, mm -hmm. 
and they go, wow. But the but the critical part, you can't stop there. You got to put the product in their hands. Yes. And when we put the product in, 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 in the car guy's hand, and they sit there and all of a sudden, wow, this is so easy. Yeah. We got them for a lifetime. You know, it's lifetime value. So it's, it's, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't invest that much time in, in an individual if yes. you didn't know there wasn't a long-term payoff. You can only do that when you know you have a product right. that earns their respect. Right. And so the goal of our company, we, I mean, we do all kinds of kind of neat things, right. and the TV show and the packaging and the car shows and all that. The goal of the company is the product. Mm. We can do all that, but the product doesn't give a wow. Right. You know, it, what, what's it all about anyway? You know, it just, so the, the, I, everybody in the company knows the product, the lab, that's where the goal mm. is. We make the best products to honor my grandfather. Mm -hmm. and we make products that are better than anybody else. We prove it to ourselves. We test them. We send them out all over the world. We test in every kind of environment, humidity, dryness, whatever. Right. So when we finally go to market, we know that product's going to work wherever it goes. Right. And to have that kind of technology and passion behind the product, that's Huge. the key to our success. And my grandfather did it at his level. Yeah. We're doing it at a whole another level, but it's the same passion. You know, my my father in law is a painting contractor, and and he w he kind of mentored me a little bit as I started my detail business. Mm -hmm. And I was asking him, you know, where, where do you advertise? Do yellow pages, or you know, where, where are you? You know, I guess it was yellow pages back then. Today it'd be Google, <laughs> yeah, even though it was right. only exactly. you know, we're talking seven years ago. But you know, well, you kind of bridge the gap there, don't you? <laughs> yeah. in your lifetime. But um, <laughs> uh, you know, where do you advertise? And he looked at me and he said, you know what? If you have a good product and you have a good service, you're never going to have to worry about advertising. Yeah. You're never going to have to worry about any of that stuff. Yeah. Just stick, have the main focus be yeah. on your service and your product, and you'll never have to worry about anything else. Obviously, that's a broad scope. You do have to worry about these little things, I, but it's the core the, of everything. That is the core. Everything. That's the core. So, that's the core. You're dead on. So you're, you're in Detroit. W when do you come back out to California? Uh, I came back out at the end of, I was there for a couple of years. Okay. I came back in uh, 1967. Okay. And um, and why did you come back besides the Great Well, we um, you know, I, I didn't go there to stay a long time. Okay. I wasn't wanting to live in Detroit the rest of my life. <laughs> and the Detroit riots happened while I was there. Oh, wow. You know, so that was, that was an interesting time. It was a valuable time for me because um, living in California is not the real world. Mm. It's just not. I mean, uh, it's easy to take care of a car finish here. You know, <laughs> I went to wash my car the first time. Well, we moved to Detroit in December. First time I went to wash my car in my garage. The towel froze to the hood of the car, you know. I had cr I had chrome rims on my car in Detroit, and, and within a month they were rusting. I'd never seen rust on wheels before. <laughs> what, what is this? All this salt on the road stuff? and stuff. So, it was a oh, wonderful wow. experience. It, it taught me the real world and taught me the level we need to take our products so they perform in those kinds of environments. Ah. Uh, so I had a wonderful experience, uh, but things were happening back home, and um, a freeway was taking our uh, our uh, our property where our plant was in Pasadena. Okay. And we needed to relocate. Okay. So I came back uh, back home and helped in that. A situation and uh, relocate us down to Irvine here where we are today. How did you find, why Irvine from Pasadena? Well, I vacationed down here on okay. uh, Balboa Island all oh, yeah? my life growing up. And okay. I always said one day I want to live down here, and nice. now I do. <laughs> Good, for you. <laughs> you know? Good for you. And Pasadena was going through huge problems at the time um, uh, lots of racial tension, mm -hmm. force busting, and whatever. And, right. And uh, it was just, it was a problem time. Pasadena's come back now and I'm very mm -hmm. much tied in the turn roads and stuff love past yeah time. but I'm thankful that it urged me to move down to Orange County and I love love this <laughs> area and you've lived here all your life yeah. you know you were born here <laughs> I had to move here but but uh, so I came back for that and I had this dream I just had this in me that mm -hmm. I wanted to create a retail brand yeah and uh, starting from scratch I need to know I need to create a whole new image entirely different image from our mirror glazed professional brand so there wouldn't be any confusion uh, uh, right because the, the you know the professional brand is pretty structured right and you get into retail there's no structure it just kind of goes all over the place so right. I had to have an entirely different brand so that's when we created even the logo McGuire's the scripted logo uh -huh. that was created in 1970 okay it, it speaks back to our earlier days mm. but it, that 
that <laughs> brand of, uh, that now is the brand that you know is right. my, uh, was uh, was a whole miracle story of how that happened in 1970. And then I launched in 1973 the first product, Cleaner Wax, McGuire's Cleaner Wax. What was the first big retailer <clears throat> you got into? Oh, my first big retailer? Well, of course, no retailers were the size <laughs> they are today. Well, how about what was the first well, retailer? I, when I called them Walmart, they were talking about how they're going to be bigger than Kmart someday. And I went, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> this is a little Arkansas country. They could be bigger than Kmart. Right. Yeah, that's a joke. And um, is sad, there even a sad, Kmart around sad, uh, um, there's one, today? There's one yeah. in Big Bear. Kmart, Kmart was a, the big deal back in the right. day, and it took me a long time to sell them. Mm. I, I sold little little bitty independent speed shops. Okay. Not too many of those around anymore. But they they were my my customers. Uh, I grew up uh, shopping at Pet Boys. Yeah. That was my 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 auto oil chain store here. I was determined to sell them. Mm. And they were probably the first one. I guess okay. they were the first one that I, I actually sold. Um, but um, uh, it just, it, uh, I, could, I could tell you so many incredible stories. I had the door slammed in my face so many times, my nose <laughs> yeah. was sore. You know, it was just like, I got no, 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 no. You know, but if you have it in you, you're going to make it. You're going to do it. Yeah. You never give up. And um, I had that belief. I, I mean, I just really felt God wanted me to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, without getting preached I just yeah. I really felt that was what I was supposed to do. And Absolutely. So I persevered, and I uh, I got people liking me and liking my products, but mm -hmm. they said, but you don't advertise. And, you know, you got to advertise being ourselves. And and working that whole balance <laughs> right, thing was, right. was, was, uh, was a wild uh, wild ride. And if they start advertising, they still don't take your product on, and then you're not making any money anymore. Right. Uh, and the whole family say, what kind of fine mess you got us into, you know? And it was, it, I'm, I'm minimizing those conversations. They were huge conversations. Yeah. And the points, the weird points, I thought I was going to drive the company right out of business. And, but it was just faith and believing that's what we were supposed to do, and then just it just all sudden it turned. And... Um, and so then, what year did it start to turn, and it just kind of the, the growth just started getting huge? <clears throat> you know, uh, they, they, all the chains said, uh, "You go on a TV, and we'll put you in." And so I talked this little family business into going on TV, and we did it, and nobody took us on. And they said, "Well, our 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 merchandise uh, vice president of merchandising and our buying committee doesn't believe you actually do it. So if you, if you really do it this year, we'll put you in next year." And so we lost a lot of money that year. And I had one board member say, you know, Bank of America now owns McGuire's. Thank you very much. Oh. And my dad's two brothers uh, uh, were not real happy with me. In fact, one wanted to wring my neck, I think. He just <laughs> you know, just thought I just, I just destroyed the business. Oh. And I prayed, and I just went back, and I just felt led. I said, you know what, we got to do it again, because they all said they'll put us in the next year. And you got to be kidding you know, there's no way. I had the, I can't even believe I went back to the board a second time <laughs> and because we were toast. Yeah. And they said, I had some outside board members that helped me. And mm. by one vote, they said, if you can sell it to Bank of America, we'll do it. And I sat down with that manager of the Bank of America wow. with my family behind me. And I said, here's my plan. Wow. And the bank, bank manager said, I had to never very conservative bank. Yeah. The bank manager said, I have to be out of my mind, but I think you're going to pull this off. Let's wow. do it. And wow. so I had it all scheduled out. This 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 chain who never sold. Right. This chain will take a thousand cases, this chain will take twenty two thousand cases, this chain will, I had it all figured out. I had this whole schedule, fifty thousand cases. Right? Wow. Fifty five thousand cases. And then we had to make we had one little machine to make. So we had to start making the product in October. Okay. Before they'd even purchased it. Way before they purchased it. Oh, and man. we filled our little building to the ceiling, <laughs> wall to wall with product. I hadn't sold one case. And I had a, my cousin come up. He says, come here, man. He says, have you seen this? I said, uh, no. <laughs> he says, are you going to sell all this? And the blood was just draining right. from my head. I thought I was going to pass out. I said, oh, no problem. You know, we can sell this stuff. <laughs> and, um, you know, all those people that uh, all the buyers that said they're going to buy and didn't buy, but will buy next year. They, 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 wow. they, once they saw we were going to advertise, they bought. Wow. And I missed the projection by 1,000 cases. That stuff Out of 55,000. Out of 55,000. <laughs> and it, it just went like, it was gone. If I hadn't wow. had faith, if I hadn't yeah. believed, yes. and I held back, we would not even be in business yep. today. Wow. So um, if there's people listening to us right yeah. now, I have a dream, believe. And I would say trust the Lord with all your heart. You get not ninety percent. You got to trust with all yeah. your heart, but you got to you got to be there. You got to go for it. Yeah. 
and um, and you're doing that. Yeah. You're doing that very thing. You're following your dream. Yeah. You're going way beyond your comfort level, right? Yeah, yeah. You are. Yeah, even being, <laughs> so, being here talking so to you. I you know, this is with where you are right now. I'm yeah, so, I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm honored to be with you. Today. I said it, but I really mean it. I, I really true. appreciate that. And it, it's <laughs> it's good to hear that you know there was that pivotal moment oh, in McGuire's. You know, where really it was either left or right, and and there was a fork in the road. There was a fork in the road. Yeah, you yeah. know, and it's it's nice to hear those stories yeah. because. Um, you know, for me, I've had multiple forks, <laughs> multiple <laughs> yeah. forks in the road, as, as of yeah, course, yeah. McGuire yeah. says as well. But, yeah. you know, for I hope it's an encouragement to guys listening, you know, at that fork in the road. A lot of our listeners are still working mm-hmm. a regular job and trying to detail and trying to bridge that gap to make detailing their full-time gig. And they're kind of at this fork in the road. Yeah. And, you know, I try and tell them, well, don't completely ditch your, your income, especially if you have a family, you know. But, but sometimes yeah. you've got to take a risk. And sometimes you got to have faith. Yeah, you have to, you, you got, you got to be, have a resolve within you of what you're supposed to do. Absolutely. And then stick to it. Uh, I see little car wax manufacturers start up now, and I, whenever I see them at a little event, I go over to them and I congratulate them, and I say, "Stay the course." Yep. You know, I was a little ten foot booth like you yep. one day. Yep. You know, uh, camaraderie. I, you're thick and thin. You know, yep. you can make it. There's room for all of us. Yep. And I love the camaraderie. That that is so <laughs> true. I just had a. I was telling you, I have little daily quick tips that come out. And the quick tip that happened to come out today was camaraderie among detailers. And, you oh, know, it's wonderful. It, it's wonderful, and there's Absolutely. so much of it. And, and Globally. Globally, and it only helps the industry grow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's awesome to hear that you go over to Little, little Booths. Oh, I do. It's, I do. it's fun. You know, it's, I, mean, I, I, I remember my roots strongly, yeah. you know, and I try to encourage young people coming up. It's, you know, you can make it in this world. America's this great nation. Yeah. You can make it here. Yep. But you got to work. You got to work. You know, I'm still doing it. I yep. mean, I I work, <laughs> I still work long hours, yep. going six days a week, yeah. and sometimes seven, and yeah, it's just uh, you know, the, you have to pay the price. I mean, you can't be lazy. You got to you got to do your part. But um, if it, it's back to the saying that we all right. know by now, it's been used. But if you find something you just love to do and find a way to make money at it, and it's it's a trite phrase I've been used a thousand times, right. but it's so true. It is. I mean, I have so much fun. I've, I've never been more excited. I've never worked harder. I mean, I'm just going flat out all the time. <laughs> it's and, awesome. And, uh, and have more fun I've ever had, you know. It's, it's great. Just, uh, I just, uh, I'm very thankful for where yeah. I am today. And for the team we have here, yeah. you know, the Mike Penningtons and the Jasons yep. you talked about, yep. and, and all the great team. Great guys. I just, I mean, people that have this passion, have been with us. Yep. For a long time, and and uh, and they do it better than me. I can say now. You guys do it every day. I don't get to buff as often as you guys do. You know, so I learn from them now. Wow, and that's uh, so. It's, but it's it's family, and I yeah. think people when they walk in the premises here, as I just to repeat it for a second, I think you feel that absolutely sense here. Absolutely, just just to touch on it real quick. When I told you, I just shot a total. Hole, hole in the. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Just a blank email to Jason saying, "Hey, would you want to come on my podcast?" I wasn't Joe from Tom from anyone. And he goes, yeah, come on down. You know, and I'm like, and then the hospitality that he showed me and Michael too, and, you know, yeah. just unbelievable hey, hospitality. You got passion. Come on and come on in. Absolutely. That's so family. you're quite the visionary. You've kind of showed us how that. What do you see as the future for McGuire's? Well, uh, we're having a lot of fun internationally. You know, uh, there is a saturation point. I mean, how big how big a market share can you get in the United States? We, we're 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 kind of up there. Mm-hmm. We still have, we have great growth plans for next year plan, and you know, but but still the world. I mean, we only have seventeen percent of the world's population of cars. Wow. So uh, we're in uh, something like uh, two hundred countries, and uh, we're having enormous growth overseas. And it's fun to replicate what we're doing here. And as I mentioned earlier, some cases even do it better than we're doing yeah. here. We have some people that are just so out there, and they have their own ideas. Wow, you know. And car guys are the same all over the world. They have vastly different cars. Sometimes they have cars that I think are just downright ugly, but that's their cars. <laughs> that's their history. Right, right. You know? And in some of those countries, they can't bring in outside cars. they got to deal with whatever they got. That's what their yeah. – the passion's always going to be there for a car, whatever that car is. And to come alongside them and help them make their car look perfect. That's you awesome. Know? Uh, we're creating a car hobby in China. I wow. mean, we, we're all over China. Wow. And there was, of course, they were there on bicycles, right? Right, right. So we're in the first 20 years of, of the car hobby growing, and we're all over the wow. place creating clubs and shows and helping them know how to do that. And right. Con- con- 
And it's funny, their characteristics on their own, it replicates what we see everywhere else wow. uh, around the world. So you go into the most impoverished countries, you know, third world countries, and there'll be car guys there. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. With, with the same fashion you have. Yeah, and, and this podcast is listened to in about 30 different countries. Well, there you go. So we're right on your tail. You we only got 170 yeah. more to go. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but it's true. The, the passion behind Car Guys, it's everywhere. It's wonderful. So. It is, it's a, it's, it's, I think it's the world's greatest fraternity. Yeah. The, the car And it is. is. It's it the really is. the world's greatest is. fraternity. It, 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 cre- it brings out the best of people. It's like a, a screening process. Mm. I don't know, but every car guy, and of course it's guys and gals. Gals are car guys. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. You love cars, you're a car guy. Yeah. But if you're a car guy, you just, they're just it, wherever you go, car guys are generous, they're kind, they're giving, yeah. they're nurturing, uh, they're, they're there to help if you have a problem. You yeah. know, the, all the stories yep. are just legendary. They'll do anything they can to help you. Even if they're competing with you in the, in the show, they'll help you get your car ready, right? Right. It's great for families. It's great for bringing up kids. Uh, the, mm. Have the hundreds of hours working in a car with yeah. your adolescent son or daughter. Yep. You know, you, what else could provide that kind of closeness and camaraderie? You Absolutely. Know? I asked one twelve-year-old, but isn't your dad the disciplinarian? Doesn't he make you do your chores? He said, "Oh yeah, it's like Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "But when we're working on cars, we're buddies." Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking, how do you reach your adolescence in yes. this crazy age yes. and all the negative stuff going on? How do you keep a connection there? And Absolutely. cars provide that connection. Absolutely. Couldn't so, agree uh, more. Yeah. If someone's just starting out in their business or they're um, trying to make that transition from a uh, regular corporate job to breaking out on their own in the detailing industry, is there any books or any recommended resources that I know a great podcast you know if <laughs> I'm you trying fo- to get him to listen <laughs> if you, see, that's all you need that, that is just writing the book on podcasts so you know that with Google fortunately I mean yeah. the web it's just so amazing the information you have and you, I just go for it every direction yeah. there's no end no saturation point for learning uh, strive for excellence. Mm-hmm. Never do things. Never do things halfway. Do it the best you can possibly with your whole heart. Yeah, and um, and be willing to pay the price. Yeah. So I think you got a TV show. Is there any plugs that you want to make for McGuire? I was. I usually ask people. You know, how can people connect with you? But they, you know, maybe giving out your phone number or yeah, your email probably see. wouldn't be the best thing. Uh, yeah, well, so. my, my cell was nine for nine. Uh, oh no, I better not do that. I guess. Well, we've been doing Car Crazy TV for eighteen years now. Wow. 18, 18 years. Wow. I cannot believe it. Uh, we have great fun. Go all over the world. Talk to car guys. We did it because 18 years ago, the car hobby was was going downhill. Mm. Uh, car shows are not being well attended. Car mm. clubs are disbanding. And we said, somebody's got to do something. To, who's going to do it? And, <laughs> but car, the car hobby is grassroots. It just starts with, you know, one guy likes a car for some reason. You find somebody else likes the same car. And yeah. they start having fun together and then they form a club and they find out there's another club over somewhere else that likes the same yeah. type of cars and they have a show and it just kind of happens right there is not it's not like motorsports we have these sanctioning bodies right right and um one day i was uh one night actually i was on a car rally and uh, carol shelby was sitting next to me that evening in a in a home and somebody's playing the piano and he was telling me another one of his amazing stories always had a different yeah. story but for some reason that night, it crossed my mind, I wonder how many millions of car guys would love to be sitting next to Carol Shelby listening to him to eat, spill his yarn about That's kind of how I feel you know? right now, <laughs> talking to you. And so uh, I came back and talked to <clears throat> Leslie Kennedy, a gal who had been with us for a lot of years and, mm. and had the same concern, was in charge of corporate communications. And she said, you know, you know all these people. I mean, who knows the people you know in the car? I mean, mm. you know their stories, and they need to get out. Why don't we do a TV show? <laughs> And so Speed had been on the Speed Channel, Speed Vision at the time, been mm-hmm. on air for a year, formed by, started by Roger Warner and some car guys. And we went over and met with them, and they bought four episodes. And then they gave us four more episodes, four one-hour shows. And then they said, you know, your show's pretty good. Get it down to half an hour, we'll run a lot more often. And uh, we, we thought they were, they're hurting us because a half hour, well, you're cutting us back to half-hour show. But the fact of the matter is most of the shows are half-hour shows. Right. And if, they, if we did a half hour for them, then they could run us frequently. And so we did that, and they ran us, you know, 20, 30 times a week. Wow. And uh, then they sold out to Fox, and um, we thought, well, it's over. The car guys are gone. And Fox sat down and said, you're actually one of our higher-rated shows. We want you on year-round. 
So we got very excited about that until we about an hour after the meeting where they wait a minute, I got a company to run. I can't. This TV shows looks a lot of work. <laughs> right. It takes a lot of time. So they said, we'll do 26 shows and then we'll do repeats. Hmm. And so we did that for a lot of years. And um, of course, then Speed Channel ended up, um, they, t they changed to Fox Sports 1. Mm -hmm. And so they weren't a sports venue anymore. Meanwhile, Discovery, uh, John Hendrick, who's a great car guy, the founder of Discovery, um, they, they created this network called Velocity, mm -hmm. which is now the Great Car Guy Channel. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, it was in its, in its yeah. infancy. But they were pursuing us, and so we moved over to them. And that has been so much fun. And with the Discovery now, they take us. We're now, I think we're 90% of the world uh, because of them. But so they've been wonderful to us. Wow. They are serious car guys. All the guys at Velocity are, are, are passionate car guys and really into it. And we're great lay at home there. We do. We only do 13 shows. So okay. Now. I mean, at this only. stage of my life, we only do 13 <laughs> shows, and we, and we do a lot of overseas. But okay. each show is, you know, it's not like we come in the studio and we do a, a mm -hmm. cookie cutter show. You right. can do several of those a day. Right, right. We always go somewhere. We take nine people, travel wow. nine people, uh, three cameras, three camera shoot. It's a big deal. It's a big yeah. production. And when we shoot, we shoot for two or three days, and then we have the travel. Right, So you right. do that 13 times, and that's quite a quite a commitment. Right. Um, and... Uh, but that, but a lot of people like the shows and they and they don't necessarily see them first run. So right. now they run a lot of them. Okay. So folks say say I sure see a lot of reruns. You know. <laughs> well, yeah, we only make thirteen shows, but it, it ends up the reruns are have as good a ratings as the first runs because oh, wow. you have different audience. Sure. You know, not the same if you're watching all the time. Absolutely. And so it's worked well, and and the show has um, been fun for us to put a spotlight on a lot of the friends we have around the world. And then, of course, I've met people that I had not met before. Right. That, uh, so it's, uh, we feel great responsibility with that because it's, um, it is the one show where we have the opportunity to show car guys all around the world what car guys look like all right. around the world. Right. that conduit. I've been doing it for 40 years. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it firsthand, but now I bring cameras with me right. so that, you know, show the world. millions of car guys yeah. can see what I see and appreciate how similar car guys are in all these different countries, That's you know, great. and how the pace is just the same and how we are blessed to be a part of this wonderful fraternity, it, car I, hobby. I, I, I love that, <laughs> that the fraternity, because it is, it is, uh, it's a brotherhood. It's, it is. It, 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 uh, what a great word, a fraternity of, of and people. The car show is about that. It's not about selling car wax. It yeah. was. It was about growing the car hobby. Right. Fortunately, the car hobby now, I mean, I hope that we had something to do with it, but there's a lot of factors that have made it happen. Mm -hmm. But the, the car hobby is exploding right. all over the world. Yeah. You can't keep up with it. You go to the SEMA show, it's on steroids. You go to Pebble Beach Week up in yeah. Monterey, it's on steroids. Every event is just jam. You know, you go every car show you think of. Even at, at a Seal crowds. Beach, Seal Seal Beach, Beach car even show. Seal Beach, which is a fabulous car show, by the Sold way. Sold out a yeah. year in advance yeah. for so a little tiny town. No matter where you go, we just see a burst of scene yeah. all 20 years ago. What a difference from 20 yeah. years ago. So, awesome. Uh, it bodes well, and and you don't have to be a car guy to love old cars. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Good point. So there's lots of folks coming along now saying, wow, this is a really fun yeah. way to spend a day and an afternoon. Absolutely. Bring and, the kids. And, and bring the kids. I love that point, yeah. too. So, well, hey, we'll start yeah. wrapping it up. I okay. appreciate you coming on the hey, show. nice Thanks to talk with you. God bless you and all you're doing. You're, uh, you, you've are you got a great future ahead. Uh, I'm going to be watching you. It will be amazing to see where you are even five years from now. Great. It's going to be, you're, you're on a fast track. I, I hope to have you back on the show because <laughs> I want to talk about stuff like you hiring Jason as your, oh, yeah. as your personal oh, detailer. So we've got to story. have you back on the show. Great story. Thanks, okay. Gary. Awesome. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. Head on over to autodetailingpodcast.com to read our full show notes, blog posts, updates and even sign up for our newsletter so you can be the first to hear about the latest and greatest all things auto detailing podcast and don't forget if you leave us a, a rating and review on itunes it'll help us reach other auto detailers just like you and you may even get a shout out at the top of a future episode thanks for listening we'll see you on the next episode